Welcome once again to Christ in Prophecy. For the last couple of weeks, we've been discussing a topic that is as concerning as it is timely, the increasing deception in the world. We've titled this brief series, False Prophets, Cults, and Demonic Deceptions. Scripture repeatedly warns us to be alert and avoid the evil schemes of the devil. Jesus Himself warned His disciples, and by extension, all of us who follow Him, not to be misled. And yet, that is exactly what Satan is trying to do. Realizing that his time is short, Satan has pulled out all the stops to deceive the unsuspecting and dull the impact of the saints who serve God. A known liar, Satan's classic tactic is to simply lie, but he and his demonic cohorts will do anything they can to disrupt and damn. And since so many people have embraced sin and been given over to the depraved mind, they become unwitting pawns in Satan's spiritual battle. Nathan is right. But there are some who embrace the rebellion against the living God so completely that they are active participants in the devil's battle against the Almighty. Those people elevate themselves to become false prophets and often establish or perpetuate cults. When we discussed false prophets and introduced the concept of demonic deception, we invited a respected Christian expert on those topics. Today, we've invited an old friend of Lamb and Lion Ministries and a renowned expert to help us expose the outbreak of cults in the world today. We're glad to be joined by James Walker, the president of Watchman of Fellowship, an apologetics ministry based here in Dallas, Texas. So James, welcome back to Christ in Prophecy. Great to be back. Well, it's glad, we're very glad to have you, and you are a renowned expert on cults. So tell us how you came to have that kind of expertise. Well, Tim, my, my background, I, I was born and raised a Latter-day Saint, Mormon, fourth generation. So I believed in the Book of Mormon was the Word of God and that Joseph Smith was a prophet, but um, I had some Christian friends that God put in my life to ask me some questions and challenge me on, on some things. And on a, a course of a journey, I came to realize that Mormonism wasn't true and, and I embraced Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior Praise by Lord. grace through faith alone. But since that time, I've had a tremendous interest in, in deception. How did, I, how did I go wrong? What are the signs to look for? Mm. Uh, how can I be aware? Jesus said, beware of false prophets. Well, we can't beware unless we're first aware. So that's, that's what our ministry is all about, helping people be aware. Well, obviously, Nathan and myself, as you are ordained ministers to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, but your ministry, Watchman Fellowship, specializes in equipping Christians to share the gospel with those in world religions, heretical sects, cults, the occult, and other con controversial doctrines and faiths. So what would be a working definition of a cult for someone watching today? Uh, a cult, and again, you have to be careful because the media uses cult mm -hmm. for one, in one way and, and, and our culture, but we're looking at our ministry in a theological perspective. So okay. we're talking about a group that claims to be Christian or compatible with Christianity, but deviates from essential doctrines of the Christian faith, not the secondary issues. Christians can disagree about some things, right. but there are so, some doctrines that are so important that to be wrong in these areas of theology is to be dead wrong. And that would put you outside of the bounds of, of traditional Christianity and in what we would call either counterfeit Christianity or it's appropriate to use the word cult. Okay. James, just this past weekend I was in the park with my family and two young men dressed in white shirts and slacks with backpacks were walking around handing out brochures. And I said, hmm, I wish James Walker was here because if anybody could witness to them is, is those two gentlemen. So that leads me to the question, what are some of the more popular, what we consider cults today, that have managed to fit themselves into mainstream Christianity, or at least, you know, they've got the kind of the taste of Christianity? Well, I think Mormonism would be one of them, uh, and, and it certainly appears to be Christian in the name of the church, uses Christianity, mm -hmm. uh, but others would be the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, um, older groups like Christian Science. Mm. There's some new upcoming pretty powerful groups. There's the World Mission Society Church of God, a, a Korean-based, South Korean-based cult that actually has come to America. They're actually sending their missionaries door to door, and they believe in a doctrine of of Father God and Mother God. 
So this is a one that if you haven't heard of it, you will hear of it. So there's new groups com constantly coming out as well and, and raising to prominence. But that's just a few names. Okay, because in talking with gentlemen like this, they seem to use a lot of Christian dialogue, but the definitions that of how they define Christ and gospel and stuff are very different than ours. That's what makes it so difficult because they use the right words, God, Jesus, salvation, heaven, born again, but they have radically different definitions. They use our vocabulary, but they have a, a different dictionary. And if you don't know those mm -hmm. definitions, you're going to think, well, that, that sounds Christian to me. It does. So your ministry, you mentioned to me, tr tracks and has identified a large number, an astounding number to me, of cults that are on the world scene today. What is that number that you all would categorize as cults right now, and how do you discern if you're an average person trying to understand the dictionary that a cultish uh, figure is using? It's hard to put an actual number on. We have files and information. We, we did a book a number of years ago um, in which we had an alphabetical listing all cross-referenced with the definitions of about 1,700. But that would include doctrines, practices, mm. controversial leaders. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, but there's, this isn't the thousands. That's kind of frightening because about 10 years ago I had to do a sermon on the cults and I used that book and I think you had about 1,000 at the time. And you said there was 500 cults just in the United States alone. Now it's up to 1,700? Uh, yes, yeah, so that, now that would include other doctrines and practices, but that's not okay. the complete list either. So we, we <laughs> just got some of the highlights basically to put together though. So it, it was going to be in the definitely in the thousands by now. There's some, of, some of them are small groups with like 20 or 30 members, like the Heaven's Gate, we, we uh, got exposed to them back in, the, uh, back in many years ago and a small UFO cult, but yeah. then, uh, then 39 of them committed mass suicide in California, all of a sudden it's in the news. And so that becomes one of the you know, cults that are in the news, but nobody would have heard of it had they not done that. I one time was uh, flying next to a person on a commercial airliner and he got to talking to me. We, we kind of enjoyed the conversation and finally said, I think I can uh, share with you something that that I think has a lot of relevance. And I said, okay, go ahead. He said, have you ever heard of Raelianism? Ooh. And I had heard of Raelianism. It's akin to the Heaven's Gate, but they yes. believe that uh, mankind was planted here by reptilian uh, aliens. And it was crazy stuff, but this was a very rational person who obviously had given themselves over to a, a false idea. Many times you mentioned they have leaders that are very charismatic yes. or that have enough what sounds like truth blended into the falsehood that they can deceive other people. So we've talked about false prophets. Is every cult centered around oftentimes an individual or an idea that has some blend of truth and falsehood? Yeah, nothing is 100% uh, false. So there's always gonna be an element. It's like the old saying goes, it's not the glass of water that gets you, it's the drop of arsenic. Hmm. So it can be 99% true things, but that 1%, if it deviates on the essentials. Uh, for example, if you're wrong about who Jesus is, you might be right about everything else, but if you've got the wrong Jesus, that's a deadly case of mistaken identity. Mm. So it's not how many doctrines you're wrong on, it's the type, the kind of doctrines that you're wrong on. We can have disagreements about mode of baptism, we can have disagreements about church government or what kind of music we ought to play in church. Uh, that's that's Doesn't common. Doesn't make you part of a cult then. Exactly. <laughs> right. But when you start okay. saying that we're saved not by grace through faith alone, but by tithing or by uh, a certain diet, there's, there's a, a big movement with uh, Hebrew Roots movement, with it, which they say you have to have be under the Old Testament yes. dietary laws. The, these, these become uh, detrimental to the gospel. Yeah, obviously that one was addressed right in the New Testament, so I'm surprised that that argument is coming back again. You know, it's funny you mentioned having just a little bit of falsehood. When I was in the Kentucky legislature at one point, I set a box of brownies on my desk as I was making a speech, and I said, if I made this box of brownies with the most pure and natural ingredients and yet went out to the yard and got a dropping from my dog and blended it in, it'd just be a, a small portion of the overall brownie mix, but none of you would eat it because it would be, yeah. you know, unpalatable. It'd be bad. And that's exactly what has happened too often. But sometimes it's not just a little bit of falsehood. It's giant whoppers of lies that Satan has convinced people to accept. Yeah, and, and that's, that kind of is one of the questions. Is it better to be obviously false or is it, is it the one that's almost true? Mm -hmm. Is that the better sheep's clothing? Jesus warned about beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing. They're going to look Christian. 
they're going to be in the sheep's clothing. Well, you, James, would you agree to this then, that if they, you look at what they have in common with us, they deny the sufficiency of the gospel of Jesus Christ as revealed in the word of God, then they offer another false gospel. Two, they elevate a central figure or a leader to a godlike status and call him prophet or pope or whatnot. And three, they lead people away from the real Messiah, Jesus Christ, who's the only way, truth, and life. There, there you have it. On those essential doctrines is where they're deviating. And, and the, on the sufficiency of, of Christ. Now they will, it will be disguised because they'll say, Jesus is the Savior, we need Him, um, we, we won't be saved without Him, but what they will say is that what Christ did is not sufficient. You need Jesus plus you have to do these other uh, things works. in order to earn your salvation. So Jesus is necessary but not sufficient. That's what to look for. Are they 100% works-based religions then? Uh, virtually all of them will have some kind of work that you have to do. And th th we also have a problem with uh, the, the soul mediatorship of Jesus Christ. They will say in order to get to God, you can't go directly through Jesus. You've got to come through their organization. Mm -hmm. They are the only true religion. I had a Jehovah's Witness lady who was at pumping gas at the gas station and she comes up, pops up from the gas station. She has a watchtower to give me. I said, all right, I'll take it if you take one of my tracks. And she backed up and says, this isn't an exchange program. This was her <laughs> earning her way to salvation by giving out these tracks. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, only recently has the Watchtower, just a few weeks ago, uh, said that you don't have to report your hours anymore. Uh, but every Jehovah's Witness uh, through the history of the organization until now has to say how many hours they spent in, in the preaching of the kingdom ministry, door to door is the most common one we know of. And, uh, and they really believe that their salvation is somehow inexorably linked to magazine distribution. <laughs> I, I find so it so instructive as Paul said to Timothy in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, so this has always been a problem, even in the days of uh, the New Testament, but he said in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to the deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. And we're seeing that multiply, and I think it's a result of what he addresses in Romans chapter 1 when some people's minds are given over to depravity because they have rejected and rebelled against God so much that they embrace absolute lie and they are embracing of depravity. And yet, I'll remind uh, many people that Blaine Pascal, a, was a uh, French mathematician, physicist, and philosopher said that in every man there's a God-shaped void. And if you don't fill it with Jesus Christ, he was a believer, then it will be filled with something. And Satan would love to fill that void with every kind of falsehood, even if it sounds true. One of the things that is, is uh, real, so disturbing to me, we do a lot in the area of atheism also. We, I'm the, the co-founder of the Atheist and Christian Book Club. We, have, mm -hmm. we, we meet with atheists yeah. regularly. But it's one thing when an atheist shakes their fist and say there is no God. Okay, that's, that's tragic. But these people really are trying to get to God. And they've been deceived and they're trying in all the wrong, it breaks my heart because these are people, except for God's grace, any one of us could be going down that same road. Do you find that it's easy to convince an atheist, unless they're absolutely just closed-minded, that atheism is really a, a fool's choice because no man has been to every corner of the universe, every dimension. So I find it pretty easy to move an atheist toward agnosticism where they recognize, all right, I just don't know. Well, you're already halfway there. A, a lot of the atheists are already with you on that. Okay. And so even Richard Dawkins, one of the most notorious uh, 21st century atheists, doesn't say there is no God. What he says is there probably is no God. <laughs> now, whenever one of our book Edges club atheists best. says that, I always want to quantify that. Can you give me a number? Yeah. Is it, what is it, and, and sometimes you'll hear, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's probably 95% uh, sure there is no God. Well, if I had a 5% percent chance of winning the lottery every week, I'd be tempted <laughs> to play it every time. So uh, if there's even one chance in a million, if that's the only hope for eternal life, you grab it. That's right. Yeah. That's a great point. Well, that begs the question then, as we see secular humanism and a rise of the nuns, people who claim they have no religion, would you define that as a part of a false religion or even a cult? Because leftism seems to be taking over America with almost a cult-like fervority. The nuns might be more, I would quantify it as a, as a sign of the times. And okay. this seems to be where, now you have to be careful on the nuns because nuns doesn't, doesn't mean they don't believe in there's a God. Hmm. It's not pure atheism, there's atheists in it. 
uh, but it simply means they have no organized religion. Okay. And that may be a cultural uh, mm. phenomena more than it is a theological or philosophical uh, difference. People are in our culture right now are against any kind of, of establishment, any type of, uh, they're, they're, they're um, skeptical about uh, I any kind of big business, any kind of corporation, uh -huh. and that goes to our churches too. So organized religion, is the stock is down on that right now. Do you see, in addition to a cultural trend toward rejecting establishment anything, that there's also been an increase in various pagan forms of worship and even given over to demonic spirits more specifically? I just find that even our leaders who celebrate a culture of death, who, who celebrate the, the murder of children in the womb and want to make that one of their lead agenda items, as well as all the other uh, leftist agenda, and I dare say there's some on the far right who are, are crazy as well, and they're given over to pagan ideology. In uh, 2 Corinthians 11, Paul warned about those that would preach another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. And so that other spirit, what we're seeing is it's not that they're against spirituality so much, but it's not the Holy Spirit perhaps. And there is an element within cults and certainly within the occult that there is some spiritual reality there. Some of it's real, but it's not mm. true. Yeah. And there, it could be a demonic. That's a good way to put it. So what would you say to someone who is watching today and says, I have a loved one who is ensnared in these very kind of, of lies, whether it's the occult, whether it's a cult, whether it's some kind of false religion altogether, how do we reach them for the cause of Christ? A lot of our ministry deals in this area. People contact us all the time. And, and let me say, it's one of the most difficult. With, when you're talking about family, when you talk about your children or grandchildren, it's very, very difficult because you don't want to blow up the relationship. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to endorse it either. You know, so how do you do that? What I recommend is, first of all, you need to become an expert as much as humanly possible on that particular theology, doctrine, mm -hmm. or that religious group and learn as much as you can. It's like you might not be interested in a disease, but when your loved one gets the disease, I want to know everything about that disease. What are the treatments? What are the cures? And so, but just because you know the information, Tim, it doesn't mean you can, you can force them to listen to you say it. You've right. got to wait and pray and ask God to open the door. Don't cram it down their throat. Be there tell, let them know that you love them, mm -hmm. that, you, that you're always going to be family to them and then ask God to open the door. So when they have a question, when they're ready to talk and they ask you a question, you don't want to be in a position where you really didn't study that, you're not ready to answer that question. But I find some parents, some grandparents, they want to force that door open and you've got to be patient. God is not up in heaven wringing his hands worried about this. He's got a plan. He is in control. And we can always know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And sometimes that means being patient to wait until someone else is the right person to open that door. Exactly. Because whether it's baggage or whether it's just a relationship strain, we may not personally be the person to intercede, but our prayers can intervene on behalf of, and then we trust God to, uh, to bring them across paths with someone who can be that right person. Yes. Well, James, what are some of the warning signs that we're looking out for if a loved one's being pulled into a cult? I think of Allison Mack from Smallville. I used to love watching Smallville, and a lot of her cast were actually shocked when she was found to be part of a sex cult, Nixium. They said she wasn't just drinking the Kool-Aid, she was swimming in it. How do we discern if our loved ones are falling into such a cult? Uh, you can sometimes notice a change in behavior. A lot of the cults do focus on campuses, university campuses, and so um, your, your granddaughter or your, your, your son may be involved with World Mission Society Church of God, very active on uh, the uh, um, Kip McKean's organization, uh, the King Hammond out of the Crossroads Church of Christ movement. So there are several campus-based groups on that. Christians on campus, they'll sometimes go under that name. But you'll see a change of behavior. You'll see uh, a wanting to get away from family. The cults will often want to say, no, we're your family, not, oh. your, not your parents. We are your family. They won't understand. It's okay. Uh, you're helping your parents by not telling them the truth. If they ask you where you are uh, during spring break, uh, don't tell them the truth. So they're being coached on how to, how to um, uh, guide through that relationship with the parents. And so uh, you, you want to ask some questions in a subtle way and, and, and not in a, in a way of condemning, 
uh, but can you tell me more about this, this uh, church that you're going to? Can you give me some information? Do they have a website? Something that you can do a little mm -hmm. background study on and just be, um, but the, the calls that we usually get, they notice a personality change yes. with their family member. It's funny you say be more educated. I had a roommate one time who was Mormon and I began to study. And as I studied and engaged in conversation, I realized I knew more about his faith than he did, at least his claim of, no, that's not true. I said, well, it, it's right here. And I was uh, bringing to light things that he, he was unaware of. Well, James, we've quoted scripture today about the end times. Do you see this getting any better? Or do you see the, the explosion of cults in our day and age only getting worse as the end draws near? Uh, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, oh, we're going to have these last days revivals. I, I kind of see the opposite. Uh, you know, prophecy says there's, there's going to be an exponential rise of deception and false prophecy. That's almost kind of tells you maybe we're in the end times just mm -hmm. because we're seeing that that upswing. Uh, there's always been deception, like you said, but it seems to be uh, significantly more and faster now than it's ever been. And so, yes, I think we, we're living in those days. What would you say to a person if they've watched all the way through on this program and they say, well, I'm kind of involved in something you all are calling a cult. What would be your pitch to them to, to step into the light of Christ uh, and out of the darkness? No one knows they're in a cult. I mean, mm. if you knew, you, you'd leave. And so uh, this is what, when I was a Mormon, I had to face this. What if my friends are right? Uh, and, and, and so you have to do your own research. And so I'd be more than happy to provide anything that I'm saying, give you background information to show you from the writings of the leaders, from their scriptures, give you that information to let you see both sides. There's two sides to every story. And what is your website yeah, so people can get yeah, in contact okay. with you? It's at uh, watchman.org. So www.watchman. Uh, dot org. Just like Ezekiel. James, any last word of encouragement to Christians who are watching today and whose hearts would be heavy, again, for a loved one or just for the, the time in which we live? While there's great deception uh, going on right now, I've never seen an outpouring of people coming to Christ out of these groups. Islam is a case in point. Never in the history of the world has more people been coming to Christ out of Islam than in, in, in the history of Islam. Oh. Yeah. And so I want to be part of that. I want to be able to have the questions, have that relationship, know how to have that gospel conversation. So if God chooses to use me to help someone, I want to say I'm ready. I want use, please, Lord, use me. Well, James, I can tell you, I so much appreciate your faithfulness to your calling and to share with us and our viewers how we, the church in general, but us as individuals can shine the light of Christ even into the darkness surrounding us all over today. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Even as we were recording this brief series on false prophets, cults, and demonic deceptions, America witnessed a dramatic demonstration of all three. Elite college campuses erupted in spasms of violence and hate as students, faculty, and outside agitators railed against Israel and America, proclaiming their solidarity with the Palestinian cause and even the terrorist group Hamas. Ironically, the word Hamas actually means unrestrained rage and that is exactly what we saw on full display as elite universities lost control of their campuses. Clearly, some of these so-called protests were stoked by false prophets of hate, but the indisputable fact is that thousands of students have been indoctrinated to buy into a Marxist cult of oppression, anarchy, and anti-Semitism. Instead of gaining enlightenment through education, they demonstrate what Paul called the futility of their minds being darkened in their understanding because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. Behind all of this is a demonic deception from the pit of hell. Speaking to a group of Jewish Pharisees, Jesus said, You are of the father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. The father of lies is behind all the lies being perpetrated on Columbia and UCLA and dozens of campuses in between. Satan is behind the unrestrained hatred and rage that motivates the demented terrorist in Gaza and Iran. But hear me very clearly. Jesus came to offer salvation to those who are perishing. He came to bring light into this dark world, and He came to offer truth to those ensnared in lies. 
to those who believe in Him, Jesus said, If you continue in My Word, then you are truly disciples of Mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We are not filled with hate or rage, even toward those who are hate-filled and raging. Our prayer is that they too will come to know Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, who has set us free. If you would like to learn more about the false prophets, cults, and demonic deceptions multiplying all around us in order to warn your friends and family and speak truth into the lives of people you love, then consider purchasing bundle number 904. While supplies last and at the special price of $30, including shipping and handling, it contains Warren Smith's insightful book, The Titanic in Today's Church, along with four classic Lamb and Lion DVDs. The New Age Movement with Dr. Reagan and Warren Smith, World Religions and the Dangers of the Cults with Dr. Reagan and Ron Carlson, and Catholicism versus Evangelical Christianity with David Reagan and Mike Gendron. Altogether, that's almost five hours of powerful video teaching. Just visit our online store at ChristInProphecy.org or call the number on the screen and tell them you want bundle number 904. Folks, we have covered this series in prayer, knowing that as we have endeavored to expose Satan's nefarious tactics, the Prince of Darkness would oppose us at every turn. Even as we've called out false prophets, cults, and demonic deceptions that have ensnared millions of God's image bearers, our ultimate battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. We pray that like us, you'll be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might, and we'll take Paul's advice to put on the full armor of God. Surely if the angel sent to encourage Daniel could be detained for 21 days by the demon assigned to plague Persia, you and I cannot be cavalier towards Satan and his minions. That's exactly right. Jesus told His disciples that they would only defeat certain demons with prayer and fasting. In other words, our weapons are not words or arguments or anything outward, but a total reliance on the power of God. For those of you who have a deep burden of sorrow for someone you love who has given over to deception, we join you in heartfelt prayer. For those who know someone who is flirting with deception and being led astray, we know your heartache. We would simply encourage you to speak the truth in love, bear a consistent testimony of faithfulness to the true and living God, and redouble your own intercessory prayers. Then let God be God. Our great God loves our loved ones infinitely more than we can. He proved that by sending His only Son to be our Savior. Pray without ceasing, and then trust in the Holy Spirit. If you have questioned your own faith or felt the siren song of Satan's lies pulling you away from Christ, then heed Jesus' admonition to see to it that no one misleads you. Visit our website for more information about this topic or to subscribe to our Lamplighter magazine. You can get the electronic version for free, or you can call the number on the screen to subscribe to the print edition. If you do so today, we'll be sure to send you a copy of our latest edition that focused on false prophets, cults, and demonic deceptions. We'll be back next week with another episode of Christ in Prophecy that we know will be a blessing to you. Until then, keep looking up for our blessed hope, the way, the truth, and the life, whose light can illuminate every darkened heart, is drawing near. Godspeed. Thank you.